Yes, it's true. Trees, just ordinary trees, tell us many a story. Were it not for trees, we could not determine dates for happenings of long ago. Trees furnish us with a climatic history back through the ages. I want you to meet a man who knows more about trees than anyone in the world. Dr. Andrew E. Douglas of the University of Arizona. Of course, uh, our founder, Andrew Ellicott Douglas, uh, he was hired here at the university in uh, about 1905, I believe, 1905, 1906. And he was an astronomer, and he was originally interested in sunspot variations and how the sun affected climate. And so he began to look at tree rings to try to uh, get a climate history that he could relate to the sunspot history. And along the way, he showed that you could develop uh, tree ring chronologies that could be used to date the ancient ruins of the southwest. And he did that work um, in collaboration with Emil Howery and a number of other archaeologists here in the 1920s. And when they were first able to tree ring date uh, the ancient ruins of Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde, this was an enormous breakthrough. It was really, and still today, is one of the greatest um, archaeological discoveries in North America. And uh, it was uh, one of the, really, the first major scientific findings to report it, be reported from the University of Arizona. I worked for Douglas as his assistant uh, for about a dozen years. And then we went through a period in which it was really problematical whether the tree ring laboratory would continue to exist or not. The decision was made, and again, thanks to Dr. Howery, who was very much a part of this, the laboratory did continue. This was Dr. Harville's, President Harville's decision. Well, the collections that are in this particular room are essentially all from archaeological, tree ring specimens from archaeological sites here in the southwest, including northern Mexico. But it is here where, at least for me, this is like being home because this is where I got my first introduction to dendrochronology, working on some of the samples that are still stored in this, in this room. We must keep these samples because we have to go back to them from time to time. And as new materials come in, we have to get these materials out for comparison purposes. Dr. Bannister uh, has been a major um, contributor to our laboratory for decades, literally decades. He originally worked with uh, Andrew Douglas uh, and Emil Howery, and then was the longest lasting uh, director in the laboratory for more than two decades. And he really built, I think um, Bear Bannister really built our laboratory, our modern laboratory. The, the current uh, laboratory of tree ring research, I think, is is really at an all-time high in terms of our productivity and numbers of graduate students and projects, uh, really with global extent. In recent years, in particular, um, there have been many major applications in study of climate change and global warming. Uh, some of our scientists have been look, studying the temperature history of the of the planet, for example, with tree rings from um, from the northern latitudes and from high elevations tree growth is controlled by temperature. So using the ring records, we can, we can study the history of the temperature of the planet. And so tree rings have been front, front and center on the study of global warming. There's a lot of activity around here because there's a game later on tonight. And on the left, we have our uh, hot dog stands and popcorn. And on the right, we have Tree Ring Laboratory offices. And this is the world's largest collection of ancient timbers. And of course, no smoking in the archive. And this wood is from all over the world. We have samples from South America, from Africa, from Europe, and North America. Uh, so it's really a world collection. And these are, these are samples that, that uh, several generations of tree ring scientists have collected and used to study climate history and archaeological history and geological history. And of course, we never throw our wood away because we believe that there's new information still to be found in the tree rings here. Uh, the Bell Collection, this is wood from the mound cultures of the southeast. And you know, th this material has never been analyzed. 
It's a collection that we obtained decades ago, but it hasn't been studied yet. So this is one of the another great use of the archive is is wood that people can come here to study and learn new things about uh, environmental changes and cultural changes. Keep on coming. Back here, we've got wood from bristlecone pine samples. Bristlecone pine are the oldest trees in the world. And uh, uh, some of our scientists, Edmund Schulman, discovered the bristlecone pines as being the oldest living trees. And over the decades, uh, we've built long chronologies, tree ring chronologies, with, with observations and measurements of rings going back almost 10,000 years. And in this file cabinet here, we have uh, the voucher collection, or the, the, the last remaining collection of the original wood that was used to calibrate uh, to calibrate radiocarbon dating. So right here, for example, this is a, these are pieces of wood from 2100 BC to 2200 BC. All right, so this is, these are chipped out tree rings, and we had other samples like this that were sent to radiocarbon dating facilities around the world. And so the original wood here was used to calibrate the radiocarbon dating. These are samples from some of the oldest trees in the world. This is a, a sample from a five, th nearly 5,000-year-old 5, bristlecone pine sample right here. And on back here, we have giant sequoias, giant sequoia collections from California. And these trees were over 3,000 years old. The original collection back there is from A.E. Douglas, Andrew Douglas's work in California. Those boxes contain full cross-sections of giant sequoias. And those have been used to study forest fire history and climate history and all kinds of other things. So uh, the great exciting thing about the new archive building is we're going to be able to move all of this wood into a new building and organize it properly and catalog it properly and make it available, much more available to current and future generations to study. Several years ago, and Agnes could see the, the extent of our collections here, and uh, we were talking about the world importance of these collections in terms of uh, climate history and geological history and human history, and that really we, we have a responsibility the Tree Ring Laboratory and the University to, to manage these collections for the future and for future scientific work. And I think this was inspiring to Agnes and uh, I think it was one of the, one of the elements that led her to uh, offer this very generous gift to us.